Hey, in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you some of my favorite sites that I get my textures from, how to take those textures and the texture maps and what each one is, and how to put those into Redshift in the Node Editor and get your material looking like you want it to. It's really fun, you can get some really amazing results with just some nice texture maps. If you know what you're doing with texture maps, you can make your materials look amazing. So let's get into it. Let's check it out. I've got a real simple scene set up here with just a psych wall and a sphere, and we're gonna pop some materials in here. Let's get into it. Polygon is one of my favorites. It's by Andrew Price, uh, who started Blender Guru. He does a lot of stuff in Blender, but he's made all these amazing textures, and there's a lot of free ones. But he also has a whole lot, and it's kind of subscription-based. But uh, I just want to show you like what you're going to get into with some of these textures. You can see there's all kinds of woods and pavements and smudges and rocks and things like that. So I want to show you how to use some of these in Redshift. So let's start off with this. Uh, I've got this ground tire track one. What you do is you'll click it, and then you can choose resolution. I've chosen 4K and download it, and it gives you all these maps. Okay, so you'll get those in a zip file, and you unzip them. And so here we are. Okay, so you've got all your textures here, and you're going to look for the one that's colored. That's going to be your diffuse map. It's going to be called Color or Alibo or something, but just grab that, drag it in. It's going to go ahead and make that a texture node for you. Use Color. Boom, you've already got that going. Okay, so now what you're gonna do is open this back up. You're gonna want your normal, I like to do this in this order, normal map. So if you're gonna do a normal map, you have to add a bump map. Bump, node to texture input, goes back up here, overall, bump. You have to make sure, since it's a normal map and not a height map, it's going to be all purple and green and stuff. You need to make sure this is set to tangent space normal and not height map. Because height map is for black and white uh, bump maps. And this normal maps are always the fun purple, green, blue colors. You need to make sure that's set to tangent normal. So that's going to actually make it read that map correctly. Okay, and the last thing we're going to need to bring in here, well, not the last thing, actually, we're going to take this gloss map, and we're going to take this gloss, and we're going to plug that into reflection, reflection, weight. So then we're going to take this placement, bring that in, we're going to add a displacement map, we're going to go input to that texture texture map grab this and we actually go to the output with displacement and that's where you put your displacement okay so what we're going to do is we're now going to take this material we've made add it onto the sphere and you can see already it's got it's pretty nice looking but something's just not quite right about it and so we've got our sphere and it's uh, 64 segments so that's pretty high. It's not great, but what we need to do to make this displacement work with the Redshift model, we've got to add a Redshift tag, a Shift object. And within the Redshift object tag, you're going to go to Geometry, you're going to click Override, Tessellation, Enable. That's going to basically, Tessellation is exactly the same as Subdivide, basically. So it's just going to do it in the render time rather than in your preview file. So also then you need to enable Displacement. And this is where the fun begins. Okay, so we've got displacement here. Let's zoom in just a little bit here. Take a look at this. Make this a little bigger so we can see it. So now you can start playing around with this displacement scale and just start sliding it up. You're like, okay, that didn't do a whole lot. It made a little difference. But you start adding the maximum displacement up as well. You start really exploding it out. Boom, so now you've got real thick, real thick displacement, very, very nice. The only issue with this, that looks really good. The only issue is, is in your viewfinder, you will not see how far it's going to displace your object. You kind of have to wait until the render. There's no preview or like if I know that I have a you know, hard edge here, but my displacement's bumping it out to here versus here, I won't know that until I render it. So you just have to keep that in mind when you're rendering things because sometimes you can get things intersecting and stuff if you displace it out too much. But that is looking really good for some mud. So that's 
it, you know, you've got this nice, nice dirt material there. So you want it to be a little muddier. Let's go in and look at this gloss map. And let's unplug that from the reflection weight and actually plug that into the reflection roughness. And that's going to just give us sort of a, a wetter mud look. That might be more of what we're looking for there. Yeah. Really nice, but some other sites I like, such as uh, textures.com, is fantastic. But when you're using the free things, you're kind of limited to a lower resolution. And you have X number of credits you can spend. But most of the time, if it's seamless, you can get away with uh, less resolution. It's obviously always better when you have more, but they've got a lot of, of new stuff. They've got a lot of good... Um, HDRs, they've got new 3D scans, 3D brushes, and all kinds of things. So definitely check out this site. I mean, you can just scroll through this forever and get some really cool stuff. They've apparently partnered up with some Substance stuff to get that going in there. Substance is amazing. But yeah, so there's a free, really high-quality MUD. I also like to use SketchUp textures. They have a lot of good architecture stuff and um, like ArcViz type stuff, wood and things like that. That's something I want to show off. Uh, let's go to Polygon. Actually, no, let's go to Textures. Now we'll use Polygon. Polygon's got some good stuff. So let's say Polygon. And let's go to like this hardwood floor, right? Okay, using those same techniques, we're going to make this nice hardwood floor look, okay? So what I've done is I've downloaded this. And I've brought in the color map, plugged it into the diffuse. I've got the... Uh, gloss plugged into the reflection weight. I've got the normal map uh, sitting down here, not being used actually. So up here, I have the displacement map going into the RS displacement and into our output. And the displacement on my plane actually has, under geometry, auto bump mapping. So that's going to kind of work as a bump map because what I wanted for my floor was actually something. A little extra and that was these smudge textures I like these these just I like smudges and stuff they're just really nice to put over top of stuff just to kind of dirty it up without making it too grungy so I've got this overlay here this white smudge and I've plugged it into the bump and I set my bump to a height field and a point three and that's plugged into my material so now so now, if we look at my render of this, and so what I had to do here with my wood though, however, is with the displacement, I had to take it up pretty high. So it's like at 40 and 55, and that's giving me these nice little highlights here with the wood. So you can see in the render of this, you've got these this really nice little extra detail touches that kind of just look like sneakers and stuff have kind of rubbed away on the finish of the floor over the years and this kind of adds this extra realism photorealistic detail to it it's something that's not so imperfect that a client wouldn't approve of it but it's also not so perfect that it looks fake so it's just nice to sort of add these little scratches and things to your floor and they just, when they catch the light just right I mean they're they're fantastic looking so yeah awesome awesome stuff so here's an example of a scene I made uh, using those exact same principles uh, I believe the brick is actually uh, Grayskull Gorilla's everyday materials collection uh, it's a fantastic pack of textures the leather is also that the wood is that um, I love Grayskull Gorilla and they just always provide some great stuff. Uh, you can check it out on their website. I'll put a link below. Um, actually, if you go through my tool farm link below, uh, it'll actually help support me. So if you want to check that out, I'd really appreciate that. Use that link. But um, I mean, they have just a ton of great textures. And you can tell here it's like plug and play, same kind of way. The only difference is with Grayskull Gorilla's textures, uh, you don't have to hook anything up. You can just bring them straight in, and you don't even have to mess with them. So they're they're really, really nice. The only thing you have to add is if you have something like your displacement here for the brick, you would obviously have to add that and the geometry to your uh, to your plane back here. But that's that's what's going on with this, 
this brick wall and this leather and everything it's just like the IOR is perfect the reflection's nice the bump is nice the coating on this fine wood for this Eames chair is perfect along with the hardwood floor it's just a little rougher I mean it just everything looks really nice so once you learn how to just plug things into the right spot you really just can just start streamlining your workflow and going a lot faster and start spending time on the tiny little details rather than trying to get uh, just each texture taking forever on each texture you can actually just you know it's not it's not any less impressive if you use a texture that someone else made than if you just create it yourself it's it's not like uh, it's not like you didn't do enough work it's really hard to get over that first gap where you're like well I didn't make this model I didn't make that texture so I mean did I really even make this scene yes you did I mean you as long as you didn't like download the scene from somewhere if you added some lights or you set up the camera or something you know it's yours if I'm if I'm filming something in the real world and I didn't craft the object that I'm filming I don't think well I didn't actually film that you know I didn't create this video it's something else so you just got to get over that hump of wanting to to try to create every single asset in your scene it's good to know how to do it but it's also good to know when to do it and when not to do it that's more important so that's my tip uh you know explore the resources Check out a bunch of stuff, you know, see what you like best, what works best for your workflow, and let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.